to nine. Masters students from the Royal College of Art have launched a design competition called the RCA Grand Challenge to try to come up with solutions to clean up the oceans and protect coastal communities. It's the Apparently, it's the biggest single institution postgraduate design project in the world, and its aims are aligned with the goals of the UNESCO Ocean Decade, which is basically this initiative to try and improve our oceans and really uh, get people around the world to collaborate on that. Let's speak now to Tegan Mills, who's an MA student at the Royal College of Art, and also Dr. Helen Scales, who is a marine biologist, writer, and broadcaster. Good morning to you both. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tegan. If I could just start with you, just tell us, please, about a few of the projects, maybe one or two in particular that you've been working on. Because I read, for instance, about uh, a particular design you've done to try and um, deal with the overpopulation of jellyfish. Yeah, so our project, um, which we called Insoluble Solutions, it focuses on collecting microplastics from the waters of Marchwood, which was the area that my group was uh, sort of specifically given to research. Um, well, well, and we're looking to do this using jellyfish mucus. How, how, how does that work? I'm so sorry. You can't, I was, even at this time of the morning, you can't say phrases like jellyfish mucus without us inviting the obvious question, which is, what on earth are you talking about? Sorry, how does this work? No, so yeah, the, the, um, their mucus is insoluble, which naturally attracts other insoluble materials uh, in the water. So, you know, such as microplastics. Um, so we've kind of de- designed a device that looks to achieve this. Okay. Is it, I mean, it's a strange thing to say, but a lot of people think fixing the enormous amount of microplastics in the oceans is something that is generally the domain of, of science and engineers. Is it sort of daunting kind of embarking on this if you're not kind of someone who's trained as an engineer, but is someone who's kind of got a background in design? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The, the team's been uh, cross collaboration. So I'm a service design student and we've been working alongside a uh, design product student, a uh, textile student, a fashion student. You know, we're all kind of working together and there's no way that we would have come to this solution without it having been cross collaboration. So it's been a really brilliant to, uh, opportunity to work with other people to collaborate on something, you know, with the most innovative minds in their fields. And is the aim, Tegan, is the aim eventually to try and commercialise this, to monetize it, make it something that could be spread out through industry? Yeah, so, I mean, jellyfish blooms cause a lot of problems uh, with power stations and also with marine life. And it's a problem that is happening globally. Um, like I said, we've been, we were given Marchwood to research, but this is something that could be scalable and, and rolled out kind of globally. Okay. Helen, um, doctor, I should say, doctor scales, I always try to respect people's academic uh, pedigree. What do you make of, of that particular solution you've heard and also of, of, of students in design really getting deeply involved in trying to fix our oceans? Yeah, I mean, I think it is really exciting that we've got this interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approach. I mean, it shows that um, it's not just scientists who need to be thinking um, and can be thinking about what the solutions are. Um, and bringing people together, you know, as Tegan says, who have to think in very different ways is, is going to be crucial for fixing this massive challenge we have, which is the, you know, the problems in our ocean. Um, so, you know, so I think that's, that's really exciting. I think the other thing about specifically the, the jellyfish idea that, that, that really kind of makes me think is how they've thought very, um, about the kind of connections between these different threats, you know, between the fact that yes, in some places we are getting these blooms of jellyfish um, and that's a symptom of you know the way the ocean is changing um, but also microplastics and also p- pollution from sewage you know there are so many different threats that the oceans face and they all interact with each other um, and thinking about that is really hard but coming up with ways of using that almost as part of the solution is it, really smart as well so yeah that I think for me is it's the connections that are, are really important. It is incredibly hard it is incredibly complex I mean for- goodness you know we, we certainly couldn't pretend to know much about jellyfish mucus on the today program that we are learning uh, every single day have you got any questions based on what you've seen so far helen have you got any questions for take about the practicalities of of what's being designed yeah i'd love to know what the plan is to what are you going to do with the jellyfish once you've gathered them up um <laughs> are, are they going to be used somehow yeah so this has been quite an ethical kind of question that my group has uh, been uh, approached with. We've been working closely with a marine biologist throughout this process um, who's kind of advised us that, you know, tackling the problem of jellyfish blooms is important um, to support marine life and marine ecosystems. Um, I think that we were kind of looking at in China and in the US, um, it's quite a common practice for them to use jellyfish with agricultural practices um, 
for animal feed and things like that. So there, there are a lot of options, um, but this is something that we'd have to kind of approach further down the line when we continue prototyping. This sounds like proper public policy in action, proper hope mixed with collaboration and mixed with design and science and design coming together. Uh, Tegan Mills and Dr. Helen Scales, thank you both very, very much indeed for joining us. 